up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mordai J and we are locked in. Today, we're going to start day one of the six day recap of Supercell. Now, this show is premiered on Netflix and it's six episodes and it's about British superheroes and it's a drama series that follows a group of ordinary black Londoners who suddenly develop superpowers. The series explores the impact of their newfound abilities on their personal lives and the broader societal implications. Now, this is different than what we normally review and recap. But from watching all of these episodes, this is a pretty good show. So before we jump into this and break down this Supercell series, if you like Marvel comics, anything with superheroes, well, this is something different for us. And it's only six episodes, so it looks like we might get a second season. Hit your subscribe button and turn your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And remember, this is day one of six. So for the next five days, we will be having a recap of each episode. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode one, a supercell. We start the episode off in some kind of building. It looks like a laboratory. And we see a woman running through the halls and we see a little SWAT team chasing after her. We also see people behind glass windows banging to get out. Now we don't know what she's running from or where she's trying to head to. She ends up running into a dead end. And then it looks like she has a superpower and she knocks this door off the hinge. But before she could run out the door, pop, 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 they end up shooting her in her back, and that's the end of her. We get introduced to our main character, Michael. Now, he's driving a brand new BMW drop top, and we see a woman walking. Now, her name is Dion, and he's trying to holler at her and pick her up. Well, it turns out these two are boyfriend and girlfriend, and they were saving up, and he got her a car so she wouldn't have to walk around the city. So we see that these two, two young lovebirds, and they're just trying to figure it out like any other couple would. The next character we get introduced is Andre. Now, Andre is meeting up with his baby mother, Asha, and his son, AJ. Now, they're at a famous place called Nando's. If you ever go to London, make sure you visit it. And he wants to see his child. Now, when he gets here, she tells her son to go off and go get him something. And she's asking Andre for some child support. And we see that Andre is having a little hard time with money. He also just got a job. And he took out a payday loan to give her money. And she's talking about 150 pounds isn't enough every three months to help take care of his kid. So he's trying to keep his job. But it turns out he has a criminal record and they end up letting him go from his job. So he's falling on hard times just because he isn't black in America and he's black in the UK. They still have our same struggles. The next character we are introduced to is a guy by the name of Taser. Now, he's in a crew called TB, and they pull up to this house party. And let me tell you, the house parties in London, be safe in there, fam, because they do have the knives on them. But they show up with a crew. Everyone's looking like, okay, we don't want no trouble. There's no ops in here. But there is an ops girl in here. Her name is Veronica. and She's texting her rival gang. Hey, the TBs, they are in the building. The TBs wear red and their rivals wear blue. Well, Taser and his crew, they go outside and Chucky and his crew is out there waiting on them. It's red versus blue. They are outnumbered. And when they get out there, Taser pulls out a blade, but they start throwing bricks. And then Chucky comes up and stabs them. Everyone runs and the police show up. One thing in the UK, you cannot be caught with a knife on you or a blade. You're going to jail. So everyone takes his knife. And they run away and he goes to the hospital. Now, Mike is a delivery driver. His everyday job is riding around delivering parcels. He shows up to this girl's house and, well, there's a girl named Char that opens up the door and she does have a sister. Now, these two, Charlene and Sabrina, they live together. And we see that Char, she's trying to get at Mike. But Mike is like, nah, I'm not here for all that. Plus, we know he has a girlfriend, Dion, who he gave the brand new car to. Sabrina is Charlene's older, level-headed sister, and we know that Char was trying to flirt with Mike, but Mike's not with it. So Sabrina's about to get ready to head to work, and she's telling her sister, hey, act normal for once. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. No one's about to be flirting with you this early. As I mentioned, Andre's having a hard time keeping his job because they actually ran a background check on him. So when he's talking to his homeboy that helped him get the job, he's like, man, what am I going to do next? Then some light-skinned guy walks up. Now, this young man, his name is Rob, and he's just trying to sell some weed. He's, hey, hey, my brothers, I see you stressing. Do y'all want to buy some of this weed? I got the weed, 10 for 10, Cali Kush. 
Now they in London. I don't know if they got Cali Kush, but they do have their own little surplus of uh, marijuana. And Rob, he's just trying to get some off. But Andre and them tell him, get the hell out of here. Rob is still making his rounds around the city. Now, Mike, he's continuing to deliver his parcels. And he can't get into this building. So Rob comes up to him. And you know how it is. Someone keeps begging you. Hey, you want some weed? I got some weed. You want some weed? He's like, nah, not right now. Just give me your number. So he takes Rob's number, but then he deletes it once Rob walks off. He's not about to call this guy. Taser's in the hospital after his stabbing, and the rest of the TBs, they show up to talk to him. Now, one thing about Taser, he ain't about to back down. And the reason he's not going to back down is because Chucky, the one that stabbed him, dropped the diss track. And you know nothing hurts a young man's ego more than seeing your opposition drop a diss track, especially when you're in the hospital and they stabbed you up. They're saying they chef them up. That's how bad they got them. Well, Taser's telling his crew, no matter what we got going on, we ain't going to stop until we get Chucky and them off the block. We also find out that Mike's mother has sickle cell. Now, he's trying to take her to this clinic where they specialize in sickle cell. And his mother, she's kind of iffy on what's going on here. But Mike's been saving and he only wants the best for his mother. So it seems like these women know exactly what they're talking about in this sickle cell clinic which primarily affects melanated people. They know what they're doing here, and they're going to help his mother fight this off. We know Mike wants to propose to Dion, so he asked her to go out to eat on Friday. He showed his homeboy the engagement ring, and his homeboy hooked him up with a nice restaurant. She wants to know what's the special occasion. Of course, he doesn't want to ruin it, so he just tells her, oh, it's just because it's Friday. And I want to enjoy your company. So Dion's with it. And these two young lovebirds, hey man, they're on their way to the top. As Mike is going to deliver another parcel, he pulls up into these Utes' ends. This is over where Taze and them are hanging out. Now, his crew, what they do, they extort any of the delivery companies. You want to drop a box off, it'll be 50 pounds, roughly $65. Well, when he gets over here, this is a new route. He doesn't know nothing about it. So they start roughing them up, and they're talking about $100 for this package. But out of nowhere, Taser comes up, and he stabs Mike right in the chest. And everybody's looking. They run off. But then Mike, he somehow snaps out of it, and he relives this situation. So now he's pulling up, and he knows exactly what's about to happen. It's deja vu. This time around, Mike's starting to realize, wait a minute. I just lived through this situation. But instead of getting stabbed, he looks over and he sees Taze. And he's looking at him and you hear him say, hey, let him go. Taser tells the whole crew to fall back. And they're like, come on, man, that was 50 pounds that we were supposed to get. But he lets Mike live this time. But the first time he stabbed him. So now we're looking at Mike. What's wrong with Mike? How is he really living these situations? Rod is having his own troubles. He's still trying to sell what little bit of weed he does have. Now, he's sitting in this car, and wherever he cops from, they're telling him, hey, you need to make them sales. Well, his car ends up breaking down. So he gets out of his car, and then he looks, and he sees that the bus is leaving. So he starts chasing the bus down. But out of nowhere, his eyes, they turn yellow. And he takes off. He passes up the bus. This man has super power. He has super speed. Rod ran so fast, he ended up in Scotland in like two seconds. Now, when he gets up, he's like, where am I? There's an old lady walking around and saying, oh, you're in Scotland. Where else would you be? And he's looking around because he doesn't know what the hell is going on. But once he took off and started running with that lightning speed, if you looked up, there was CCTV that captured everything. Andre lost his job. He just got back in Asha's good graces where he could see his son. And now his son is talking about, hey, pick up some food, dad. Don't forget that. Pick that food up. And he's like, all right. So he goes to the ATM. Well, when he goes in there, he has a negative three pounds and 61 pence. Basically negative five dollars in his account. He calls his homeboy and says, hey, they didn't pay me for the hours I worked. Even though I had a bad background check, they still got to pay me. 
the money hadn't hit the account yet. Well, his eyes turn yellow and he punches the ATM machine. And now you see a whole crack in the wall and money starts to fall out. So it seems like Andre's power is strength. Sabrina was supposed to be going out with her boyfriend. Well, her boyfriend ended up standing her up and her sister, Char, she's like, let's go over to the house. Maybe he's over there with a girl. Well, when they get there, there's a delivery person showing up. So Char and Sabrina go up to the door and another woman opens the door. She's like, wait a minute. What are you doing here? She's like, I'm Kevin's girlfriend. Sabrina says, I'm Kevin's girlfriend. Kevin comes out and he's like, damn, why did you just pop up over here? So Sabrina is hurt. And as she walks off, her eyes turn yellow. Well, she doesn't touch this man, but she has a different type of superpower. She pushed him back just with the force. He flew into the door. Boom. The other girlfriend comes outside. Shar comes outside. They're talking about we got to run because Kevin, well, he's knocked out. After Mike takes Dion out to propose, she says, yes, they go to the house and they begin to get it on. And out of nowhere, Mike disappears. But he disappears to someplace in London and he's walking around and he's seeing some familiar faces. He's not too sure who they are. But then somebody in all black turns around and it's him. But it's him in the future. And he's telling them, hey, Mike. We got something that we need to talk about. And out of nowhere, a portal opens up. And it's about to get ugly since they're in the future. Mike's future self tells him, since you're here, you can potentially stop this because it's showing us that Dion is going to pass three months after he proposes. So he's going to have to go back in time and try to fix whatever it is to stop this from happening. And he's looking at his future self and he's wondering, so what do I need to do? And then he teleports back to the present day. But we got three months on the clock. All right, there you go, episode one, Supercell. Now, that one was called Michael, and each episode is going to primarily be talking about that character and their powers and their story. But this is Michael, and we know we have three months that we had to go back into time to present day to try to fix whatever's going to happen three months from now because it looks like there's a war, and, man, if you ain't prepared for it, then good luck because it might be game over for you. Let me know what you think about Michael. Which one of these characters do you think is the most interesting in episode one moving forward? Thanks for watching. Be here tomorrow for episode two, followed by three, four, five, and six. I'm Mode IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.